Welcome back, everybody, going into hour number two of today's episode of Nebula Jazz. We are sans le poisson for just a minute, but let's get started anyway. Uh, Aurora, uh, you are on the ship now with Eugene and Jasper. Okay. Um, set set this scene for me. Like, are you? Is there's like music playing and like drinks out, or like what what is what does the scene look like? Well, uh, I would say yeah. There's like there's this music playing, uh, and we're sort of in like the 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 place where we eat, so like the dining place. Uh, the mess like, hall. Yeah. Yeah. So we're sort of there, and obviously there's alcohol because we brought it. Um, and so we're drinking some more, but I'm trying now to convince Clarence or Eugene that he needs to drink some more. Okay. All right. So let's, let's start in on that conversation. So, uh, so Clarence, uh, yeah, Clarence is looking up at you, uh, and, uh, and you're, you're holding like a bottle of like moonshine. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And he, he says, uh, <laughs> he's like, I've never had alcohol before. And he like oh. looks up at you call all like innocent. He's still holding his tambourine, I guess. I like roll my eyes. I'm like, Eugene, you can drop the act. It's okay. It's okay. It's just Jasper. He's just, he, you don't need to, you don't need to pretend anymore. You want some? You should drink some. You should drink some more. You should just drink some more. And I we, like. We, when you say Jasper, when you say Jasper, we cut over to Jasper and he's like trying to pry something like shiny off of a, a control panel. And he like looks over like kind of awkwardly like waves and goes back to like <laughs> trying to unscrew the panel. <laughs> yeah, is the moonshine literally made on the moon, though? Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's called moonshine. You don't make it on a planet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm basically, like, shoving the bottle into into Clarence's mouth. Okay. So. Yeah, so you, you jam the bottle into, into his, his mouth, and it just goes, bloop, inside the, the, the slime. And you see, we see the, very quickly, the, ex, the outside of the bottle, the glass and the, the label and everything, start to bubble and, like, melt. And then the alcohol inside kind of just dissolve into his form. Uh, and then he, he looks up at you as it's just gone. Like the whole bottle is dissolved into him. And he, he looks up at you and he just like hiccups and a little bubble goes bloop and like floats up out of him. Uh, and, he, uh, and he says, um, he's like, oh my, that was quite good. And kind of like wobbles a little bit. Is there <laughs> any more? Oh man, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, J Jasper, can you reach up into that? What What are you doing? What are you doing, Jasper? No, the cabinet. The thing. There's, there's more. What are you doing? So you, you look over. Yeah, Jasper. Jasper has like unscrewed one of the panels and is like, uh, spooling like a wire, uh, and and like putting some things in his pocket. And he, he's like, Oh, sh uh, shucks! I just noticed your panel here's damaged. Thought I'd give it a little look. See, old Jasper's quite the handy man. <laughs> No, no, no. We don't. No, no fixing it. We're here to party. We're here to party. Hey, Sparky, play some music, man. Uh, uh, so Sparky, yeah, Sparky, you don't. You, you look around. You don't see him anywhere. And then you notice that he's he's like hit hiding under. Like I'm thinking like dog during a fireworks thing. Like he's hiding under a a, a cabinet or something. He's hiding under one of the panels, like whining. Uh oh. I I, I I crawl up to him and I'm just like Sparky, Sparky, what's going? What's going on? And I try to grab like his his metal feet and like pull him out from it. And I'm like, come on. Yeah, and he, he like, growls and like tries to get away from you. Like he's scared uh, and like kind of backs into the into the corner. And when we see you crouch down, we see kind of from Sparky's perspective. So we look up at you and you're like, come on, boy, and like trying to get him out. And behind you, we can see the kind of amorphous like shadow thing like watching you. Can I see this in his reflection? <laughs> Um, I think that you you maybe like notice that his sensors are locked on something behind you, but when you turn, uh, you don't see it, even though we do. So we we turn and or you look up and you just see the rest of the ship, but we can see it floating kind of in front of you, uh, your face reflected in its sort of mask surface. Oh goodness gracious! Yeah, I turn around and like, what what's going on? Did Jasper? Did you say something? Did you hurt Sparky's feelings earlier? Did you were you teasing him again? Come on, man. He's a dog. And uh, I, I think so he's I, good for like grabbing the alcohol. I was gonna say when you turn, uh we, we see uh Clarence, uh and Clarence is like wobbling and, and he uh and he's like, um I suddenly don't feel very well. I think I might be sick. Excuse me. And he kind of like slimes out into the hall, like to leave to leave the ship. Uh -oh. Um and when he does, when he leaves, uh Sparky comes out into the room and like is barking at Clarence as Clarence leaves. And again, we see, but no one else in the room sees, we see the form, the shadow follow Clarence uh, outside. 
so the the two of them, we see them go down a hallway and uh, out into the uh, into the port. Right, the the airlock opens and Clarence like tumbles down into the into the port and kind of like puts a slime tentacle up on the on the wall and is kind of like leaning, shaking his little slime head, not feeling so well. And the shadow thing <laughs> kind of swoops up in front of him and he he looks up and we see his slimy surface up against the 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 mask. And this is when we we first see someone notice this thing. And uh, he looks confused for a second uh, in his slime. Imagine he has a face in his slimy features. Uh -huh. And the, the shadow uh, speaks for the first time. We hear its voice say, hello, Eugene. <laughs> and the slime, the slime's like, oh, my name's not. And then we, we pan away and we hear Clarence go, ah, and like scream in terror uh, as we as we pan away. Um, so we cut uh, we cut to Quinn. Uh, Quinn, what do we see you doing? You're, you're, you're helping out in Slime Town. Yeah, so they're they're trying to build their giant 1950s style rocket, uh, yes. and yeah. I am sitting there just mashing pieces of metal to it and like putting a weird nose cone on the top. Yeah, I imagine I imagine like a very kind of like Disney like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves esque like they're singing there's like a hi ho kind of thing going on and they're like passing beams up and Rex you're right. in the middle of all this like cheerful like workers paradise moment where they're all like hammering away and like using rivet guns and welding and building their their great holy spaceship. There's like skeletons in tanks. <laughs> exactly. in, the in the background. Yeah, in the yeah. background, we see someone being, like, shoved down by a bunch of slimes into a dissolving <laughs> tank. And they're like, no, no, I've changed my mind. I don't... Blarg! And they, like, get pushed into the tank, and they close the tank. And they're still singing as this person pounds on the glass and starts to dissolve. Yeah, it's horrifying. Um, but we see Quinn, uh, you know, helping out, uh, building the building the rocket. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just helping build the rocket and trying to uh, prove to them that I'm such a good friend that they should definitely come to all my friends who are going to show up in a little bit. And boy, would they want to help them as well. Like, man, you're going to have so much slime, guys. So much. Yeah, so you're uh, you're talking maybe with one of the one of the like the priests of the of the slimes, um, Mother Mildred. And uh, and she yes, yeah, so you're telling her and, and she says um, she says, uh, well, Brother Quinn, that's what's so great about the liquefaction process. And she like looks over at the tank and we see like a skull kind of floating in it. Uh, she says, uh, these fleshy bodies you have, and she like gives you a little pinch on the cheek. She's like, they take up so much room. But if we turn everyone into a fluid like the mother intended, we can load them into the tanks and fire them off into the sky for their great journey. We could fit hundreds of people in the rocket when it's done. It will truly be a glorious moment. So yes, yes, bring your friends, bring them all. There will be such a sermon. And and she's like, you know, she's real happy and excited about this. Um, Quinn is just all smiles. Like he just is like, yep, I so can't would, wait. Would you would you also like to to create a an aspect, right? Like because you're doing prep work in the same way that that Eugene was, right? Um. Because basically, it would represent it would represent you like setting things up so that later you can use the, right. the slime cult. Uh, I, I I would I would say, uh, yeah, I definitely want an aspect. Uh, let's call it. Hmm, it's got a. Let's do. Uh. Never mind. That's a terrible name. The first look. I'll be honest. With you, the first thing that came to my mind is the dirtiest, weirdest thing I can think of, and it yes, shouldn't. It on. shouldn't be the name. Go on. Because I was like, all right, well, they're liquefying people, uh -huh. and I'm also. It's. I'm trying to show them that I'm about love. So clearly, it needs to be liquid love, which makes no sense, <laughs> and is really bizarre. Yes. It um, is. That's true. Save that I one. Put that in your, not that in your as pocket. gross as I later. expected, to be honest. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, I, what I want is. Just something that um, reflects the fact that they believe that I'm really, really devout, and want it and so and so because I'm so devout, like they, they, they trust me with everything. Like I'm part of the crew, even though I'm not part of the goo. <laughs> part of the crew, oh, part, part of the, the goo. goo. <laughs> All right, okay. Did it, did it, did it. Nailing it. Just had to work my way through it. 
<laughs> oh, liquid assets is another good one. That's also very Ooh, good. That's a, yes. that's a good one, chat. Very good. <laughs> All right. So let's have you roll. We'll see if uh, we'll see if good how this one fellas. goes. <laughs> nice. Good. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you're. I mean, you're being you're being friendly. You're you're trying to like put yourself out there uh, for for these these folk. Um, let's have you roll sneaky. I think you're trying to like I- insert yourself into their into their their this is for your own sneaky. good. I don't know. Right. Why are you being sneaky? Um, let's call it difficulty. Uh, they, they, it's pretty easy. Same as the same as uh, Eugene's plan. Let's call it difficulty two. Ooh. Okay. Do you want to expend one of your one of your points uh, to make I it wanna, work? Yeah, I would like to use meticulous jar collector. Um, mm-hmm. I truly understand what it's like to bottle things up in jars. So I get <laughs> right. these guys. Like I've been helping them with their efficiency, their jar efficiency. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't want to put that guy in that jar because once he liquefies down, you're going to have all this extra space and you're going to mix him, but don't do it there. You want to do it in the spaceship because you get per ounce, you have this much, like that's just a lot of air. It's like a bag of chips. You just waste. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you know how to, you know how to put things in yeah. jars. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Yeah. I really want an opportunity to use either as an aspect or something later, David and Goliath, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, we'll get there. All that right. So, <laughs> all right. So you've got, uh, yeah, you've, you've ingratiated yourself. This part of the crew, not part of the crew represents Quinn's efforts to befriend the, the, the slime people. Um, and, and, uh, be a part of their, part of their, their group, their goo crew. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much like we've seen, this is sort of the end of, of that. Like you, you've done that. You've, you've helped them with this. Um, you know, time is, uh, time is, is getting closer to the, to the auction. Is there anything else, uh, Quinn, that you want to do? Is there like, do you need to bring everybody, uh, together to like have a, a last discussion about this or what do you, what do you need to do still? So I've I've already while this is going on in my times that I haven't been uh, building the ship I've been scouting the area around it. So while I'm going around getting scrap scraps and things to hammer to the ship, I've found key locations that will not allow us. To, that we we can see them, but they can't see us. Kind of deal. Yeah. So uh, I know all the the, the hidden spots. areas. Yeah, all the hiding spots that when people show up, we can be prepared. And hide back there, but uh, I haven't reached out to anyone yet because I've been stuck dealing with these, these ghoulings. Mm-hmm. And so, but I I will, but it hasn't happened yet. Okay, all right, cool. Um, I guess then we'll let's let's cut to let's cut to Rex then because you're all kind of doing your own thing. So Rex, uh, I think this is this is one of many uh, mornings after, um, and. Uh, your uh, your your friend um, Tula has uh, finished uh, finished work. Um, so the the two of you are in her workshop, and uh, she uh, she comes out of the workshop holding um, basically holding the scepter, uh, and uh, and she she says um, she says to you, well, it uh, it's not going to fool any uh, true Agarans, but hey, they're extinct. And she she puts it on the table and she says it's good work but hard to uh, hard to make it perfect. I think you understand. I did my best. And she she looks at it and to your eyes, yeah, it looks exactly like the the actual scepter. Yeah, Rex holds out the other scepter and they look pretty much the same to him. Yeah, they look the same. They feel like the same. Um, you know, you're not going to be able to use them to activate any any sp- spaceship weapon systems or anything. But yeah, at a glance and probably on on cursory examination. Uh, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, Rex just picks it up and looks on both, and then he kind of smirks. And he's like, "Well, well, go done good." She uh, she nods and she says, uh, "I hope if you need anything else, work done, you let me know." Rex kind of like cuts it off quite quickly, and he's like, "Absolutely, you'll be the first person I call," and just immediately just like leaves. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where do you where do you go, Rex? Uh, he's just Rex has got like a just like a bundle of cloth like over his shoulder. He's got like both the scepters in there. Um, I guess he's just heading back to the ship. Okay. Yeah. So she. Thank uh, God. She she bids <laughs> you adieu, and you uh, you head back to uh, you head back to the ship. 
Um, I think that Aurora, um, Eugene, like Eugene doesn't really come back. Like Eugene goes away and then doesn't come back. But you and Jasper like hang out and drink the rest of the night. And then he, he kind of disappears. Uh, I think that this is, this may be the next morning. Um, so when Rex comes back, uh, what, what does he, what does he find on the ship? Are you like passed out on the table? Uh, where, where is Aurora? So Rex, you come back, the, the, the ship opens up. Maybe we see you walk by, there's like a stain, this like greenish stain on the ground just outside the ship. Mm. Um, it's up to you if you notice it or not. Yeah. Rex can smell it. He's got like keen, keen sense of mm. smell. That's yeah. not good. Yeah. It smells Eugene-esque. I think uh, whenever you walk into the ship, I mean, it's going to be a mess. There's, like, empty bottles everywhere. There's a... There's a... Or I'll be... I'm going to be, like, on the table, passed out, my face just down. There's a bottle in my hand, and it's still sitting up. And then uh, I'm... Like, my stomach is laying over Sparky, like he was hiding under me. And I just pass it on top <laughs> pass of him. Pass it on top I'm, of like, him? Okay. like, weird, like, angle... So maybe Aurora, maybe Aurora, you don't you don't wake up right away, but Sparky looks up imploringly at Rex, like help, and like makes a little a little robotic whining sound. <laughs> Rex kind of like um, steps over them into the canteen, and he just fills mm -hmm. up like a like a bowl of cold water, and just kind of stands there and just slowly pours it on Aurora's head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So Aurora, you go from being asleep to suddenly awake and very damp. Oh, Sparky, stop, stop it. And I like look up and I'm like, oh, God, who, who are you? Oh, Rex, oh, my head. What the fuck are you doing? Sleeping, obviously. Yeah, it looks like it. Looks <laughs> like you had a nice sleep. And he kicks oh. a, an empty bottle across the room. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, oh, my head. What are they? Ow, this has never happened before. So oh, Eugene, um, at some point in the, uh, at night, I assume you're staying on the ship. Yeah. 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 So at some point in the night, you 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 came home, and like evaded the party that was going on and went back to your quarters and slept. But now you can right. you wake up and you can hear Rex and Aurora talking. So you can you can come out whenever you want, or you can hide in your room. It's up to you. Sure. Yeah. I'll I'll come out. Okay. Oh, right. so looks Eugene... like yep. <laughs> Good morning to you. Did you know about this? <laughs> about what? That she's a train wreck? Did you uh, not e know that? Eugene, um, many panels have been removed from the wall. Uh, much of the wiring of the inside of the ship has been removed. Uh, the, the ship seems to have been like, it, it's essentially up on blocks uh, for, that you can tell from the inside. Like, it will not function the way it currently is. Right. Okay, so maybe, yeah, when he's like, did you know about this? I'm like, what? That she's a, tr oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize at first. Who did this? Who did uh, this to the sh I I look around I'm like it wasn't me. I was I was drinking. <laughs> yeah. Rex, Rex someone, kind of squats someone, down. So you someone, like someone has completely depolarized the subatomic plasma shifter. The the dorsal torsional shift circuit is completely out of whack. Like the whole place has just been, yeah, taken apart. Yeah, Rex kinda like he like crouches down you and you're like he's like level with you and super close and you see he ain't happy. And he's like, who did you bring to the ship? Uh, so I brought Jasper. You remember Jasper, the space pirate, right? No, who uh, the fuck is Jasper? The guy with no teeth. He has a funny laugh and he talks really entertainingly. Ah, oh, my head. Oh, Where do I find him? Probably. He's probably drinking again. Where? Probably. Oh, but I brought Eugene. Eugene, I, Eugene, you were acting so weird last night. Eugene, where are they drinking? I haven't I haven't been here. I came home way late. No, you came home with us. I What's I the fucking barcode? Oh, 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 that one. Uh par par party par <laughs> yeah, I say, parte. 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 Rex Rex takes off the two scepters <laughs> and um hands them to Eugene and he just storms off out the ship. Eugene, there's two scepters now. Hey, where'd you get the other one? That's why I like. I like open them up 
is there any way for me to tell which one is which? Yeah, that's like a that's like a sticker. I was just, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That says fake Real. in big. Well, yeah, one of them has a little a little label. It's got a little piece of string with a label on it that says fake on it in yeah, red yeah, red yeah. writing. That's the only difference. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So I like open it, not really sure what it is, and then like, oh Lord, <laughs> just like put it in my room. And okay. as as like he walks out, I I'm like Eugene, you were acting so weird yesterday. You're acting so weird. You said your yeah, name maybe. was Clarence. <laughs> Did you bring some random hippy dippy slime to our ship? Is that what this is? There's more of you. Oh my god! <laughs> I like look around. I like start looking around for a potential other slime that's still on the ship. Mm -hmm. I, and I think, like, as, like, Eugene goes to start looking around, I, I, like, I, like, fall off the table and, and, and then, like, get up and, and quickly try to, like, scamper after, uh, Rex. And you see, I think, uh, Sparky very carefully follow after me. Okay. Uh, All right. So, Rex and Aurora, you're gonna, you're gonna leave and go to, uh, Parlay? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, Eugene, yeah. uh, we we find you in some like as you follow, uh, attempting to find this slime. You so think much still shit be on has gone ship. wrong. Yeah. So my ship is in shambles. There was another. Uh, there was another slime on my ship. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the whole any... the whole system needs some desperate re rejigging. Um. But yeah, I think that like you as you as you take stock of of what's going on in the ship, you you find your way down into the um the like uh sort of the guts of the ship. It's some some unknown part of the ship, right? We don't know the purpose of this area, but it's like a there's like a long corridor, lots of pipes and tubes. It's kind of like steamy in here. Um somewhere down in the in the guts of the ship. Um and uh, we hear maybe like a, a tool fall, like something behind you. You hear a, a like a wrench fall off a shelf, like clatter to the ground. So you just hear this noise in the hallway. Okay, I'd look to see if there's anything there. Yeah, like you, you turn around and like you definitely heard a sound from from down the hall, but right, like somebody somebody's evading you or hiding or something down here. Okay, I get it. You you got kidnapped by some weird girl. And now you're on a ship and you just want to be with your weird buddies. Okay, look, I, I can help you get there. Just You just got to come out, okay? Um, you see through the, through the mysterious spaceship steam, you see like a dark shape kind of like move across a, an intersection and like kind of go, like get, try to run away from you. <laughs> I am you. suddenly terrified and I run away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay. no, never mind, not a slime. <laughs> never mind, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, so you're like, Ugh! and you turn, and immediately, like, yeah, bang, right into, right into the this like shadowy mask thing. Um, so it's yeah, it's just like a floating circular, kind of almost like a mirror, uh, like a vaguely uh, con concave mirror, uh, a vaguely sort of shadowy cloak shape that ends in these like long tendrils, and you just turn around, like, stop, because it's right there, uh, and it, it kind of like cocks its head at you, and it whispers, Eugene. Uh, and it's clear because of the, you know, the effects on the sound and stuff that it's not actually making the sound. You just hear it in your, in your mind. Right. Uh, nope. I'm Cl Cl Clementine. <laughs> Fuck. What was his name? So you, yeah, you, you like put your hands up. And you're, are you, are you like trembling? Do you, do you look scared? Oh yeah. I'm like, you know, when you, uh, when you test jello and you like wiggle it. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah. So, uh, so the, the, the presence, uh, yeah, says to you, um, uh, I have something for you, Eugene. Uh, oh, well, that's very nice of you. Um, let me go find my friends so that we can all appreciate it together, huh? And and you you turn you maybe you start to turn and you can see that it's kind of wrapped it's it's like shadows around behind you uh, and it kind of like turns you back around like it's got its sort of little tentacle hands on your shoulders and like is all around you now and now we can see the background but it's all kind of decontrasted and it feels like at a distance um, and the only real light is the light coming from the reflection on this this like mirrored surface uh, and it says no Eugene only you 
let me show you. And it kind of like embraces you, like pulls you towards it. Uh, and we, we see it, uh, we see it reach up and take the mask away. But instead of seeing what you see like directly and seeing that scene, we cut to what is the like best possible, give me, give me Eugene's, like if you got everything you ever wanted, if Eugene was like on top of the world, what would that look like? Give me, give me a scene of like king shit Eugene, like ruling the galaxy. Like what, what is your perfect outcome look oh, like? Oh shit, I would have my own planet hmm? where I don't have to do shit. I would have so many people to do all my bidding for me. It would be mm, just great. Right, so I want, I want to have no worries. Right. So we see we see several like pink furry marsupial creatures massaging your shoulders. You get a big crown made out of like space diamonds. Yep, uh, yep. Yeah. And you're, you're just surrounded by people who are saying nice things about you and fanning you with palm leaves. Yep, and yep. and then, yeah, as we pull out, we see your palace, which is like, you know, a, a mountain carved in the shape of Eugene on your own planet. And you have your own like space fleet. Yeah. Like I, I get. It. All right. So little little Napoleon. All of that set to the song, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. <laughs> All of it. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so you, you see, we see all this. And then we, we snap back to the, the corridors. And uh, we see the thing, like, placing its mask back on. So we never, we never get to see its face. Um, right. So you see that, Eugene. You're, you're given a vision of, of what this, this thing, what the presence could give you. Uh, and it says, um, all this can be yours, Eugene. Bring me the scepter. Uh, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I've got so many compels for you if you'd like some fate points. Because <laughs> I was going to say, uh, you know, if you don't immediately have a, a, a thought, I would, I would be happy to compel future richest slime in the galaxy here. Sure, that like course. everything you've ever wanted is just waiting out there for you, Eugene. You just have to go get that scepter and give it to this weird shadowy creature. <laughs> you, want, you want to take that fate point? You want to give in? Uh, with the un with the understanding that I'm gonna give it the fake one. <laughs> oh, that's not that's not worth the fate point. Well, I mean, I guess okay. You know what? If you, I think the thing here is yeah, taking it would mean. That yes, you 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 do what it's because says. this is also this is also like a, a courage thing. Giving giving because, it the fake, yeah like, giving it the fake one does require some bravery. So I think I think that would be you resisting the compel. That would be you being like, of course. But then you no think no no. I mean I mean like I just I want this thing to leave. <laughs> like I'm super terrified right now. Yeah, the terms um, the terms of the compel are that you are that you do what it wants because it can give you everything you wanted. Uh, if you think you can bamboozle it and you want to like not deal with it then that is that's rejecting the combo which is okay you okay just, i'm you just... i want to i want to attempt to bamboozle this thing okay yeah so you you, you so, so, so i so i'm like, so it's like just bring me okay this. okay yeah yeah i i could do that i could do that for you huh i mean i feel like i've known you forever just um can we can we stop this this hug thing i'm not a very touchy person uh and it uh it says um i will await and you kind of like we, we see the, the lights come up as it kind of like withdraws from you and uh, disappears into the into the like shadowy mists of the, the lower ship. OK, I like so, try to like, very like, casually I'll, like, all right, I'll, I'll be right back. Don't don't you go anywhere. Can't wait to do do this whole thing, huh? And I <laughs> the second that I'm that I'm like, there's a some sort of a door between us. I'm just like, <sighs> OK. Okay. All right. Okay. Where did I put that? <laughs> like, go to my room, and I really, to be honest, do not want to come back out. <laughs> <This is laughs> right. Like, so you're like, I'm just, I'm gonna go, and you're like, go. What if we, I just we like don't go you. back? What if I just like don't come back? Maybe like that would that would be fine, right? Like maybe I should just <laughs> stay right, here. <laughs> yeah. So talking talking nervously to yourself, we see you leave the the hallways of the lower ship, and we we cut over to um, Aurora and uh, and Rex, and the two of you are headed back to Parlay, and uh, you know it's technically like morning for you, but uh, the 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 bar and the and the the whole station is always just like constantly constantly going. Um, so yeah, so you you arrive uh, at the uh, you arrive at the at the bar. Uh, and it's it's as busy as it was before. Lots of rowdy like chatter, 
pirates and aliens and what have you uh, all over the place. Uh, we see a uh, we see some kind of like semi human. Um, he's got a, a cluster of of arms kind of like coming out of his torso. He's got about like eight eight arms, um, and he seems to be talking on several communication devices at once and making notes with his other arms. Um, and he's got on in front of him as we walk by him, he's got on, on the desk uh, a hologram projection of your ad and then what looks like a stock market like analysis kind of like going up and down. Um, we can see him like talking to people and like typing and like, you know, doing business at, at the table. And then we see like a rowdy bunch of pirates, you know, one of them passed out on the bar, the other one drawing a space dick on his face with a marker. Uh, and yeah, and you, you walk in and we, we, we pan all the way around and then we see you standing in the in the doorway. What are you yeah. going to do? We don't see Jasper. Is Aurora I, with me? What's yeah. that? I followed you. Yeah, you and Aurora and, and Sparky, obviously, because Sparky is where, where Aurora right. is. Rex is, like, fucking pissed. You see his, like, his fists have been clenched the whole time. There's, like, veins popping up in his forearms. And um, I think uh, he sees Aurora behind him, and uh, he waits for her to come inside, and then he goes, where is he? And I, I don't see him, right? Uh, no, he does not. He does not appear to uh, to be here. Oh, great. Uh, uh, so like uh, Rex. Yeah, the Jasper is he's not in here. Maybe he's still sleeping. Uh, let me go. Let me go ask. Let me go ask uh, this guy. And I walk up to the guy that's drawing a space penis and I like look at it. And I'm like, no, that's not. What are you drawing? That's not how you draw. That's not how you draw that. And I'm like, I don't even know what it is. I'm thinking it's some sort of like creature on this planet we once went to. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, no, no, you got the legs all wrong. Oh, 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 right, 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 right. Uh, you know, do you know Jasper, the space, the pro, the, the prospector guy? It's like and he, guy, right? yeah, this, this pirate just snarls at you uh, with his, his tusks and uh, says something rude in a language we don't get a translation for. Oh, good to know. Nice conversation. Thank you. Uh, and then I, after, I after he snarls at Aurora, he looks up and I'm standing over her snarling at him. Yeah, and then he, he puts his hands up, and now we get a translation of his, like, grumbling. Uh, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know she was with you, Sharkanoid. Uh, can, can, I, can I help you with something? I, I, I literally just asked you. Awesome <laughs> um, question. Yeah, and he, uh, make a, why don't you make a roll? Uh, make a forceful roll here. Um, I'll, I'll oppose it, and we'll see how cooperative this guy is going to be. Okay. Am I making it or is Aurora making yeah, it? Yeah, no, Aurora, you're you're not helping. This is this is pure Rex right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, Rex make a <laughs> force roll. Okay, let's see how we do. All right. So you're gonna need to use a fate point if you wanna if you wanna beat this yeah. guy. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, what uh, what aspect are you? Uh, I'm a Darren Outlaw. I'm a Darren Outlaw Shockanoid. And he can just tell. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just, okay. Dang. All right. There's, so, only, yeah, a, gets, there's only a few kind of people that ain't scared of pirates, and one of them's Darren Outlaw Shockanoids. And he gets a good look at you, uh, and yeah, and he, he puts his hands up, and he's like, I'm sorry, I can't understand anything that this hairless monkey thing is saying. Oh, that's yeah, and he, you, you don't understand him. He's, he's speaking oh, like space language, and we, we see oh. subtitles. Uh, and he, he says that in gestures to you, and he shakes his head, and we see him make a, a face, and he's like, oh, it's disgusting. How, how can you stand looking at that thing? It does Rex, Rex doesn't understand him either? Rex understands him, yeah. Okay. Rex um, places a heavy hand on the table and it shakes a little bit and he goes, "Prospector." Uh, and he, he he shakes he shakes his head and he, he says, uh, "Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, me me and my crew we only got in last night. We we were here drinking all night. Uh, we were here for some kind of." And he shakes his head and he, he says, uh, uh, "Auction or or something." And he he shrugs and he says, "I I don't know. Everybody left." Uh, except this one, he points and and he gestures, and he kind of like looks like abashed a little bit, like, eh, like I'm just, you know, we're just some just guys just having a good time, um, and uh, he's being a little like uncooperative. Okay, uh, do I is his hand like on the table? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm just gonna grab his wrist and like and like bend it back in an incredibly painful manner. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So you, you pull behind his back and he yelps in pain and you know it gets not behind his back. I'm like holding out in front of him and I'm just like oh like holding out like just squeezing yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, and he, he yelps in pain, and like a couple other tables like look over, um, and he uh, and, and he's like, uh, "Hey, hi, we no need to get no need to get violent. I, I just uh, I I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe I saw something. Uh, there there was a table of old drunks, and, and yeah, no, now it's it's come it's coming back to me. Uh, yeah, they uh they they left with um, and he, he looks over at Aurora, and what are you doing right now, Aurora, while these two are talking? I'm like I'm like scratching my head and like staring at like some guy that's in the corner like mumbling nonsense to himself and just like trying to understand him. I'm just like yeah. not even doing anything. Yeah. So he he looks over and he says, "Yeah, they left with uh, with, with that thing." Uh, I, I I remember now. Yeah, because of on account of how ugly it is. Uh, but I I haven't seen him since then. But um. Usually, usually they, uh, they 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 hang out in the in the port, uh, you know, with their ships. They're a, a cagey sort, those, those space prospectors. Uh, you, you could probably find them there. Uh, Rex like releases his hand, and then yeah, uh, it's just like how man, God, yeah, and then like he he tosses like some, I don't know, some of like the dead reef currency onto the table to pay for his right, drink. Some exp- expensium chips. Yeah, and he just like. Places a hand gently around Aurora's neck and like guides her out the door. <laughs> Come on, you. Yeah, and uh, just he just starts marching with gusto towards the port. Okay, all right. So the two of you are heading back to uh, heading back to the port. You've got a lead on on where Jasper might be. Yeah. Um, Quinn, hmm. you have set things up with the 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 goo cult. Um, where do you where do you do you go? Do you go back? Are you gonna go back to the ship now, or do you do you stay there until the the time? Yeah, yeah. Been... No, I'm, I I would go back to the ship to tell everyone what's like what I've been up to and what the what my okay. amazing plan is and how this is all gonna go flawlessly. Nice. Okay, so we uh we we cut back on uh on you coming back to the ship and it's a mess, right? <laughs> like panels are broken open and someone someone has has jacked this ship good. Uh, and I think you can hear Eugene making like panicked noises uh, in in his quarters. Because Eugene, what are you what are you doing? Are you like pacing around in your quarters with the door closed? Are you like I'm no doors open. I'm not even. I'm I'm just yeah. I'm just like pacing back and forth, kind of trying to figure <coughs> out what I can do. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's Rex. That's what you or uh, Queen. That's what you come back to. And you also see two scepters in my room. <laughs> Yeah, Quint comes in and just is blown away by how messed up the ship looks, and then sort of looks around, just jaw dropped as he opens this door and sees Eugene insane, and then notices two scepters and is just completely like, "What? What happened, Eugene?" Oh, thank God you're here. Oh my God. Okay, so um, where do I even start? Apparently there was another slime here and um, Aurora brought this other slime, but also brought a guy who like busted open the whole shit. Who cares? Right? Like obviously big problem. Not the biggest problem right now though. There's also this weird, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it, it's like. A sh- Sorry. Actually, I should probably keep my voice down. It's really hard for me. Um, so <laughs> there's like this, 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 this shadow thing down. I was going down there to try and fix some stuff and I, told me that it needed the scepter so i was gonna give it the fake one but i don't <laughs> quinn looks everywhere <laughs> like what okay no here's the plan okay no this is brilliant so you you okay yes you stay up here right he doesn't know that you're here or she i don't i don't know what it is maybe it doesn't i don't know who cares so you stay up here right and then i'll take the fake scepter and then I'll take it down and I'll give it and then it'll leave, right? And if it doesn't leave, then I'll make some kind of a noise because again, loud, right? And then and then you come down and you save me. <sighs> All right. We have a plan. Um just stand there. <laughs> like go to like grab the scepter. As as you turn around, Quinn's just like What? <laughs> <laughs> I just I I grab the fake scepter and I I start to walk out and then I'm like oh right and I rip off the fake tag. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and and Quinn just goes and grabs the other scepter and just redeposits it in his pants. He's like, <sighs> I just 
No more of this. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> Good call. Keep them separated. So, yeah. so you're Eugene. Are you going down into the into the hold by yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we uh, we cut back to the the shadowy hallway. Um, and uh, hello, uh, we, hello. Yeah, sorry, I. Uh... Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Moving, moving through the, through the hallway, calling for the thing, and you hear, yeah, you hear a voice from down one of the side, uh, the the side hallways. You hear this way. What if, um, instead, what if you came this way, though? Come to me. <sighs> All right. Yep, sure. This is feeling like a weird night I had one time, but I guess we'll just ignore that. <laughs> it's like very slowly working my way down the hallway. <laughs> okay. So you uh, you turn around the corner and you you head down and you come into a uh, into a, a room um, some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of ship room, maybe like the, the phase resonance chamber. And yeah, totally. You, uh, that, you, yeah, and normally, yeah, normally it's just like a room that, that houses some kind of ship machinery, but it's like full of like raw, like bars of expensium. So you walk in, there's just the green glow of these expensium bars, just like millions and millions of standard credits worth piled to the ceiling. It's like walking into a bank vault. And we see you limbed in this this glow. And you walk in just holding the holding the scepter. Uh, uh, oh. And uh, yeah, and we see the, the shadow thing kind of form in the middle of the room and it says, um, this is only the beginning of what I can give you, Eugene. Okay, hold on, no. Hold on, just just one second. I like take out of my body like my little my little eyepiece thing, and I like inspect it. <laughs> okay, all right. Make a uh, careful roll for me. Okay. So you you pick up maybe pick up one of the bars, uh, and it it weighs. It feels like a spencium. It has that sure. that cool kind of humming like like oh yeah. This feels like cold hard currency. And make that make that careful roll. Um, four, okay, all right. Um, so we we see it in in like you know micro vision. Uh, it has you know it has a, a, a Imperium like a Mingasi Imperium bank like seal on it, uh, stamped into the end um, with a serial number. Um, it, it appears by all accounts to be an actual bar of Expensium. Interesting. <laughs> Just drop it. Yeah. Um, all right. Can I look? Can I ask you a question before we like do this whole thing? It's just silence. What? Why? Do, what? What are? What are you? What? What is this? <laughs> What's even going on right now? <laughs> uh, the thing kind of like floats near you, and you you hear its voice whisper, "I only want to make you happy, Eugene." That doesn't. Wow. Okay. Um. Well. I mean, little forward, but I guess we can work through that. Uh. Why? What? Why do you need this then? Do not worry about me. I'm. I'm worried. You know. You. You got me in the whole like embrace thing. You like mask phased me. It's. We've done a lot. You and I, I feel close. I feel close with you. Um, so if we could just like have a, a real honest moment here, just like talking about our lives, right? Like what's, what do you want? Who, who are you inside, you know? So there's a, there's a pause and it says, your friends, they do not respect you. You oh. have no home. Uh. You desire wealth. And uh, and then you just the expensium is just like glowing, and it says, "You can buy their respect, Eugene. All that you wish will be yours." I feel like you don't know them very well, but um, okay. <clears throat> 
I want just one more, just one more question. Look, just before I like, just one, <laughs> one last thing. <laughs> How do I know that once I give you this, that all this isn't gonna just like vanish, right? Because you like you showed me a lot of stuff, right? And that was obviously all fake. Like, what if this is all fake, right? I'm just like, I'm just trying to cover my butt here. Everything I have shown you is real, Eugene. <sighs> You're making this really hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> and it just whispers like the scepter. This just feel look. <laughs> it just there's just something about this. I feel like in the end, I'm not gonna have a scepter and I'm not gonna have any money. Like I, I know that you're not gonna tell me whether or not that's the case, and but so, like it, that's just what I'm feeling deep and, in and, my yeah. as a as a hustler myself, right? Like I just feel like yeah, I'm, so I'm says, in a scam right now. It says to you, why do only bad things have to happen to you? Do you not deserve good things, Eugene? I have all good things to give you. <laughs> I just like start laughing because I literally feel like I'm in a bad routine. Like, yeah, right? <laughs> just like, all right, look, um, <laughs> I, was, I was very scared of you, like, uh, literally, like, five minutes ago, practically locked myself in my room. At this point now, I feel like kind of maybe you have a script you're working from, which is fine. Like, that's how all of us have to start out, right? But I'm not going to – I'm sorry. I'm not going to give this to you. Uh, and then it, it, it pauses for a moment, and it's like, someone else then, Rex, perhaps – or Quinn, Aurora would bring me the scepter. Are you throwing away this opportunity? I, again, don't really think this is legit. So yeah, why don't you go ahead, offer Aurora all the drinks she wants. I don't know. I don't know what she's all about anymore. <laughs> right, so you're just like, nope, not happening. Fuck you. Yeah, I'm, oh God. All right, so it, uh, yeah, you can see the the expensium like kind of like fade and like disappear. I'll yell it. <laughs> the, uh, I yell that. <laughs> as the uh, as the the creature uh, like just recedes from you and and disappears, um, and uh, and it, it just says you will regret this, Eugene, mm. and it phew, disappears from from view. It like fades. All right, I like uh, wait a second until I'm sure that it's gone, and then I like run you know as fast as fast as i can go up to where <laughs> quinn is supposed to be according to the plan <laughs> and um like all right okay um so if a big shadow thing offers you everything that you could ever want um oh where is that where's the fake tag where did where did that go <laughs> i like start looking for it to make sure that we know which one is fake there mm -hmm. is a. Uh, there you come up to where I'm supposed to be, and I'm just in one of the terminals. And as you're talking to me, I'm like hacker jacking, trying to get the ship fixed again. And it's just like, uh huh, yep, sure, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you're a you're a hacker jacker. Um, you're, you're not an unjacker. It's 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 going to take a whole skill set you don't have. Oh to yeah, no, I'm, to I'm trying to jack this out. ship. I don't expect I don't expect that I know what the hell happened. I'm trying to figure out what they did to it, but I don't. I have no clue. I'm just yeah. not paying attention because your adventures are a non thing, Eugene. I don't know what you're into, but it's our ship is destroyed. So it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I wasn't doing this. <laughs> Yeah, so you each have one of the scepters, uh, and you you return from the from the hold of the ship. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, Quinn, do you do you stop? Do you, do you, do you take this seriously, or do we just hear like the flapping of Eugene's? No, because Eugene gum. came Eugene came back with the scepter, so I'm assuming that this is all Eugene's nonsense. Like I don't know what they've been up to. We had a drunk girl, and like I've been dealing with slimes all. Fucking yeah. day. <laughs> You've added I up here with slimes. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to deal with any more slimes. Slimes are crazy. 
It, it appears, Eugene, not the only wacky slime I've met today, so I really don't care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. All right. So you, uh, yeah. So you, uh, you're just gonna try to like uh, assess the damage on the ship. Yeah, I, I, I figure I can use my. I, I don't. I can't rejack, but I can understand what happened to it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and make a uh, make a careful uh, a careful roll. We'll say difficulty two. Okay. Nice. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I mean it's it's all very like it's been it's been stripped rather than like jacked, right? Like hacker jacking requires some some clever thinking. This is not the work of a hacker jacker. This is just somebody who got access to the ship who shouldn't have had it and just took all the valuable shit out, uh, replacing those parts and then time to reinstall them and then the ship will work again. Quinn looks at all the things that are missing and then looks at Eugene. It's like, what, what happened? I wasn't here. I don't know. Have you been Who listening about the shadow thing? No, the shadow thing is really important, though. That thing is so creepy. I Not being able to survive a flight in space is much creepier. What happened to the ship? All right, look. I showed up. I went to bed. And when I came back out, Rex was yelling at Aurora because the ship was in shambles. And now you're here, and you've realized the ship is also in shambles. I have no answers for you, man. Oh, for the love. Okay, Eugene. What? I've set up, I've spent days setting up an elaborate plan to figure out who is after this damn scepter. It involves slimes and liquefying whoa, whoa, people. Whoa, why is everybody and... talking to the other slimes? <laughs> Have I not told you that they're crazy? Do you think that I don't want to talk to them just because I'm shy? No, but you'll like this idea because we're using them, Eugene. I don't care about them. We're using the slimes. That's right up your alley. All right, go on. So here's the plan. And then I just rattle off the plan to yeah. her. Yeah, well, I think that's the thing is you're like, Him. here's the plan. It's and we and we we fade, we like pan away. Uh, and we cut to uh, Rex and Aurora. And you, you've returned to the port. And the port is a place of high activity. There's, there's vehicles uh, docked everywhere. There's uh, hawkers, like people who are, who are like uh, offering porter services for, for folks who are getting off of their ship for the first time. And there's lots of traffic, right? We see all kinds of different ships. And uh, we, uh, we cut to you, uh, Rex, and you, you've, you've got a bead on them. You can see there is a, uh, a bunch of filthy looking space prospectors. You can tell because you can smell the stink of their cyber mules uh, over by a janky looking ship that's mostly like mostly cargo container. And you can see him talking, um, uh, trying to, he's talking to some kind of like elephant looking creature, you know, big broad shoulders, floppy ears and a, a trunk. Uh, and they're, they're haggling. Right. And he's, he's got behind him a big cart, a little mi like a space miners cart full of copper wiring and like bits of diode. And, and they're, they're haggling over, over this thing. And you, you can you spot them right across the, uh, across the, the port. Okay. Would I know that that's my shit? Oh yeah, dude. You can, you can smell the stink of your crew all over it. <laughs> Okay. Ew. Ew. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like walking uh, in and be like, Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't, don't put that on me. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want the internet to be like, this just in. Jesse smells like ass. And that's how <laughs> people find him. That's how clear. friends find him. Oh, Let's there he clear. is. Your crew doesn't smell bad. You just can smell. <laughs> but you, we you smell. Smells. <laughs> yeah. Everybody smells. Rex, uh, a I have a children's book for you, Jesse. <laughs> so, so anyway, Rex, yeah, what do you do? Yeah, when, once we get about 30 feet away, um, they're talking. Rex kind of puts his hands on his hips and turns around to face Aurora, and he's like, Is that your friend? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 that's him. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. And he leans down a little bit, and he's like, You gotta go ask him for our ship parts back. Okay, okay, okay. Are we have fun. Go on. What? You want me? Is that it? Yeah. What happens if he says no? Yeah, I'm gonna fucking kill him. <laughs> oh, are you gonna do the thing? Why don't you just go do that? Ask him for our shit parts back, please. Oh, okay, okay. And then I just turn around and like I like awkwardly like with my hands down at my sides, I like like walk towards him really okay. quickly. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're 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 haggling, and this this elephant creature is like bellowing some noise at him. And Jasper's like, "Well, I ain't budging. I'm not taking any less than fifteen bucks." Oh. 
Well, hey, Aurora. And he, like, waves to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, yes, that's me. I- I'm Aurora. Um, and and he, he turns back to the elephant, and, he, and he, he's like, you just think about it. That's a fair price. And he turns back, and, he, and he's like, how are you doing, young lady? Yeah, so, uh, I, yeah, no, I have a, I think someone said it was a headache. Yeah, my head hurts really bad. Oh, I noticed that uh, this stuff is mine, ours, not just mine, but ours, and, and he, you have it. And he laughs. He's like, oh, I thought you might not remember. Uh, and he, he reaches into uh, reaches into his uh, into his bag, his little shoulder bag, and he pulls it out, and he's got a, a data pad here. And, uh, and he, he points at it, and he says, well, look, right here. And he holds it up, and it's like a contract laying out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer, I'm going to compel here. Uh, I'm going to compel your, uh, your, your, uh, your happy go luckiness, uh, in that you were just too eager to party and you, you got a little drunk and you signed a document that says that he legally owns all the stuff he took off the ship. Now, if you say no, if you reject the compel, that's fine. It just means he forged it. What do you think? Well, you want, I'm going to say, well, okay. You want, you, want so... that, you want that fake winner now? Can I can I what can I do this where it's like I did sign it but I don't remember it? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm assuming you don't remember. But yeah, if you take the point, it's like legally binding and real. I mean, we are a pirate planet though. Sure. Um yeah, I'm gonna say that I did I did sign it and I was just blackout drunk. Like I What's often- Aurora's what does Aurora's drunk girl signature look like? <laughs> So I think that's what we say. Like right before we go to break, he's like, "Look, I thought you'd forget," and he, he shows you, and it's like basically saying, "Like the party in the first part now owns the long, well, like long legal text," and at the bottom, it's got Jasper, and it's signed, you know, with his signature. What does yours look like? What's that? What do we see? It's like it's like if you gave a two-year-old crayons and told them to draw on the wall. Perfect. It's just yeah. everywhere. First There's star. no actual letters. <laughs> and just like blue crayon. All right. So he, uh, yeah, we see that, and he taps on it, and we, we we pull back, and we can see Jasper's smiling face like he's like, see, right here. And he smiles yeah. at you. He's missing a bunch of teeth. And he gives you a little wink and a thumbs up, and I think we, we fade to break on that. So you can negotiate your way out of this problem when we come back. <laughs> so stick around, everybody. We've got two more hours of role-playing Nebula Jazz. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 